I was low-key hesitant about making this video, but then I was like, why wouldn't anyone want to know how they can make a few extra bucks in their pockets? So, here we are. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Amanda and I make lifestyle and college content on this YouTube channel. And I hope you guys stick around and, you know, subscribe to me if you're you're down but this video as you can see by the title is me going to be talking about my different streams of income as a 22 year old college student so honestly you can have so many streams of income that like you don't have to make money from them every single month they could be kind of like passive income where some months you'll make some money and some months you won't and then there's going to be those types of income that come every single month or every single week or whatever it may be. And I kind of just want to share with you guys the different ones that I have and how it's just been like affecting my life and just like, you know, trying to save for certain things and stuff. Yeah, so this is no means like at all of me like bragging about like my streams of income and stuff. Like trust me, I still struggle with money and yeah, so I just wanted to make this video because I thought it would be fun and I was really inspired by Natalie Barber who did it and Julia Christ. So I was like, why not jump on the wave of talking about streams of income and make my own video. So here we are and I guess we'll just begin. So the first one that I have is basically just a part-time job. I work a part-time job. Usually I work about 20 to 25 hours a week depending on the week and my schedule and school and all those things. So that is the first thing that I make like a stable income on because I do get paid bi-weekly from a part-time job. So that is basically where I make the most money and it's like my, my starting point. And then after that comes YouTube AdSense. So if you are a creator on YouTube, you know that you can join the partner program where you get paid, but this only happens once you hit a thousand subscribers and you have 4,000 hours of watch time. So I do get paid by YouTube AdSense. It is, um, YouTube AdSense is something, let me tell you, like it is something. The pay for it some months is really good and some months is really bad like for example some months i ranged getting like 30 to 50 dollars and then one month i would get 120 dollars and then next month i would get like 20 dollars it really really is something that fluctuates a lot and i think it has to do with how many people watch your video how long they watch it all these things um what type of ads are put on your video i think like at certain ads will pay you higher than other ads all these things it's like a whole 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 like process and thing um so yeah youtube adsense is another way that i do have income coming in the thing about youtube adsense for me in canada you have to reach a threshold of a hundred dollars before it gets put in your bank account which like honestly i don't really mind it kind of helps me like save up a little bit more so you can't get the money in your bank account until you reach a hundred dollars so those months that i do only get like 30 to 50 dollars i don't get paid but then usually like the next month after that i will get something in my bank account so that is something um honestly yeah youtube adsense like it's a hit or miss sometimes in my opinion i mean i'm also not like a big creator with a hundred thousand subscribers that well, probably someone like that would get paid every single month, but that is not me yet. The next one kind of ties in with like YouTube, Instagram, podcast, and it's basically getting sponsored content. So sponsored content is when a brand, a company, a business will reach out to you and ask you to either promote their product, their service, their music or anything like that, and they will pay you something for it. Usually these have contracts that go with it. So for example, um, I did one with um fizz mobile i don't know if you guys know what that is but i did one with fizz mobile on my instagram and basically i had to post a carousel and some stories and then after i would get paid from them and you have to fill out a contract you have to sign it and you have to have like you have certain end dates and all these things so that is one way that you can also get paid people think that you have to have like 10,000 20,000 30,000 followers to be able to get paid from a sponsorship that's totally not true I started getting paid for sponsorships, I think when I hit 2000, which is amazing. I think what people don't realize is that there's a lot of work that goes behind creating content. Sometimes quality matters more than quantity. I mean, if you have a killer page that has content that literally looks like out of this world, people will want to work with you, no matter if you have 5,000 subscribers or followers, or if you have 100,000 subscribers or followers, if your content kind of like pops out to like brands and stuff, they will 100% want to work with you. So never like close those doors because you think that you don't have all these like followings and stuff. Like 
trust me, not every single company is like that, but a lot of companies do prefer quality over quantity, so never close that door for yourself. But yeah, that's another way to get paid, whether it be on YouTube or Instagram. I have not got a sponsor for my podcast yet. Um, maybe it's coming in the future, I don't know. But that is another way that I do get income, which is from sponsored posts. And the third one that does tie into like content creation would be affiliate links. People don't think that affiliate links are important, but they actually are. Um, affiliate links are basically these links that you can get from companies, from literally, I think Amazon has it too. I have one for BetterHelp which is in the description below if you're ever looking for it. But affiliate links are basically links that if someone clicks it and they either buy something from the site from you, like from that link, or if they sign up for something from that link, you will get a commission. So it can range from literally either 10% to 20%. It can be a fixed number like $100. So affiliate links are passive income, but they are something that are actually really important. And one month you might get zero from it, but another month you might get $300 from it. I mean, there is no harm in putting your affiliate links in your description, on your videos, on your like Instagram bios. Like there is no harm from it. If someone clicks it and ends up buying something from it, you get a little bit of money. So I don't think there's harm in that. And I don't know, a lot of people are always like, oh, affiliate links, but I think they're really important and there's something that's not spoken about enough. So that is another way that I do make income. Like I said, it's kind of like YouTube AdSense. It's either a hit, or, hit or miss each month. It just really depends how much you promote it, how much you talk about it, and if people are interested in that certain like world, like that certain company or brand or whatever you're promoting with that affiliate link. And then the last three ways that I do make income are all my own businesses. So the first one would be my apparel brand, which is called Kuki Apparel. I sell apparel. So basically I have t-shirts, crewnecks, hoodies, beanies, um, and I sell them on Shopify. So that is one way that I do make income. My own business, we love that for me. So that's one way that I make income. Another one is also my own business, which is called Wand Candles where I sell my own hand poured candles. It is a lot of work. I didn't think it would be this much work, but it actually is. And I think it's just because I got more orders than I actually anticipated, but I do sell my candles on Etsy and that is another way that I do make income. And a lot of people ask me about Shopify and Etsy and if it's worth signing up with them or like selling it yourself on Instagram. And I think Shopify and Etsy are very good tools to have. They do take a percentage of your like profit, but I mean Etsy, for example, I was getting paid $250 $250 from Etsy and after they took some profit it came to like 242 which is like that means they only took $8 so like that's nothing in my opinion I mean some people would want the whole entire thing and then in that case it is better to sell it on Instagram and Shopify I don't remember how much they take I think it's like 10 or 15 percent but at the end of the day I feel like it's so much easier for myself to have different platforms that keep track of all my orders, keep track of all the shipping, all the payments and everything. It just like makes it easier on my side. So you can decide whether you want to have full control on that or if you want to have a platform that helps you. So those are two other ways that I make income. And the last way that I make income is by doing freelance editing. So basically I am a freelance video editor and podcast editor and right now I do have three clients. So that is three different, like three different people paying that one income if that makes sense so what i do is at first i would use fiverr and upwork but now i do have clients outside of that so i don't really use those platforms that much anymore because i feel like i'm it'd be like a little bit too much to do that and all the other things um so i do edit for three people i edit for two youtubers that are smaller youtubers and then i edit for a podcast and it's been really fun so far you really do have to time manage yourself with freelance stuff because it is someone else's work that you're editing and you don't want to put them behind their deadlines and stuff so how i do this is basically i edit their stuff and i invoice them bi-weekly which means every two weeks i do my invoicing through paypal which has been super easy it's literally so cool like you put in their email you put in how much they owe you it sends it to them and like you have a date that they have to do it by and then after it sends like they send you the money and all those things it's so smooth so easy to track also when you have to do taxes at the end of the year i love it so i make income that way and that income is bi-weekly because i do invoice them bi-weekly so i think i wrote out like my list because I didn't want to forget anything but I do believe that is all the streams of income that I do have it's a lot um it's a lot of work too like 
they're not all like incomes that I literally can go to sleep and like wake up and have money the next day. That's not how it works. A lot of them do take work, do take a lot of time. One way I'm able to be able to have all these streams of income and keep them going is to time manage myself and plan everything out. Like I have a physical planner, I have a Google Calendar planner, and then I have a to-do list every single week. So that is the way I'm able to stay on top of everything and keep track of everything and make sure that I do it, get everything done that I need to do. And yeah, so that is my streams of income. I hope that this opened your eyes a little bit more and maybe you found one or two things that you think that you can implement into your own life and hopefully gain yourself another stream of income so yeah this has been fun i hope you guys learned something and i mean comment down below how many streams of income you have and anything that can like be different or cool that like we might not think of as a stream of income i would love to know so thank you guys so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to me below and i will see you next time and remember live life don't think twice i'm out of here